Kathy. Hi, Grant. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. So wonderful to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, I want to apologize for, for having to cancel the last time we were set up. No worries at all. Happy to be with you today. Yeah, super, man. I'm such a, so, so excited to be with you and spend time with you and share your story with my audience. Uh, your story is amazing. Oh, my no, goodness. No, no, no. Congratulations Stop. on all your success. Well, you know, I grew up as a young boy, you know, with you as a teenager and then as a young adult. So I'm sure you've heard this a million times, right, by guys like me. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, guys, look, today I have Kathy Ireland with me. Okay, American model, actress, entrepreneur, philanthropist, author, designer. She was, if I'm wrong, if I'm right, you were on... Uh, Sports Illustrated, 13 consecutive series, right, Kathy? Yes. Three covers. That was a whole lifetime ago. You grew up in the fashion uh, industry before social media was even present. But what you've done as an entrepreneur, as a business person, is absolutely mind-boggling. And I'm just so pleased to have you on, on my show today and to share your story with the audience, male and female, about you know your success and what you've done to not just make that one time, but over and over and over again. Uh, well, Grant, thank you so much. It's such a it's such a privilege to be with you. I wish I was interviewing you. Your story is so compelling, and it's fantastic to be able to connect with your audience. Grateful yeah, to be here. Thank you, thank you. So, look, how do you? First of all, my biggest curiosity is how you somehow broke out of the typecast of, of being a model and not and being taken seriously in business i'm saying that without trying to sound sexist or no i appreciate it uh sweat equity a lot of that Uh, one of the biggest lessons i learned from the modeling industry i didn't appreciate it at the time but it was all the rejection Mm -hmm. so when i began banging on doors of business and got laughed at and called all, all sorts of things. It didn't bother me. I was used to the rejection. So it was no means. Now we're talking. I'll come back another day. You know, maybe you'll be in a better mood or maybe you will no longer be the decision maker. Yet, Grant, I, I entered the modeling industry. That was not part of my plan. I entered the modeling industry as a business person already. My first job, I was four years old. I sold painted rocks for my wagon. I just worked all my life, um, making jewelry to go with clothing that my mom would make, sell at art fairs, onto a paper route, my first real serious business, but always working. Modeling ended up being a great education, exposed me to the best designers, to people of all different cultures, really learning how people live and what they need, what they want. The entire time I worked in that industry, I was trying and failing at other businesses. So I I look at failure as education. And in Mm. that respect, I'm very well educated. How did the modeling thing even happen? A a scout approached me, offered me an opportunity to go to New York. It was not my plan. It was not my, it was never a thought that entered my head. The look of the moment at that time was changing. So I was never thought of as model material. Yet that look was changing. And I thought, okay, it's an opportunity to save money to either go to college or start a business. And and so like when you, where'd you grow up? Grew up in Santa Barbara, California. Okay. So you grew up in a pretty hip place and progressive. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was different back then when I was growing up. Um, Just like most places, life was more simple. Uh, My world was as far as I could pedal my bicycle um my mom and dad were great inspirations mom the ultimate entrepreneur worked as a babysitter house cleaner nurse uh, dad worked in labor relations uh, specifically with cesar chavez and farm workers so how people are treated has always been at the forefront and that really dictates how we run our business today Kathy, so did you back then, there must have been something driving the entrepreneurial thing, even at a young age of four, right? So like what was driving your need or desire to have money or control or to be enterprising? Do you know? You know what, Grant? I think from a very young age, from childhood, I was exposed to people being oppressed and taken advantage of. Mm. Uh, Driving through Oxnards, experiencing the farm workers, with no place to relieve themselves with dignity. Dad worked to bring out houses, trips to Mexico, really recognizing um, money not as something that that I love, 
but recognizing, oh my goodness, the good things that can be done with it and the freedom that can be had. And so something that's really exciting today is just, okay, how do we bring this to people everywhere? Um, heading to Las Vegas tomorrow for Licensing Expo, the fashion sector of our business, working with amazing people, and also in areas of uh, telemedicine, finance with our mm. partners at American Family Insurance and Ireland Pay, credit card processing. But uh, a group that, that we met by just working with them ourselves is, uh, is Zoom Casa. And this makes me think of you, Grant, and the work that you do. Um, met a, a great guy, um, and his name is is um, is Ben, and um, he is uh, just just incredible work that Zoom Casa does, and they uh, what they what they do is make wealth more accessible mm. to everyone, and particularly. If you are a, a seller and you're trying to sell your home and you don't want to deal with just all the traditional challenges that go along with it. And so our team, what we found is in working with, with people who are selling their homes, they want the revenue, they want it quickly. It's a third party. It's they can get the cash out of their home. They can sell quickly, and they they can make a purchase without having to have that contingency sale, and that is really really powerful. So this is something that that our company does. It helps realtors because you you get the cash out. Uh, Zoom Casa. It's now powered by Kathy Ireland. What we do is we allow the person, they get the cash, then they can have a better chance of getting the home that they want. The realtor really helps realtors. We recommend all realtors do this. They get a double sell. Zoom Casa takes that home. They do all of the renovations. And so they work uh, incredible people, including our company, for wonderful products and contractors, the very best. And then it gets resold, and it, the upsell, it's it's ninety percent goes back to the seller, and so that's a win-win. It's powerful, and it really helps people. So when we're looking about how we can bring wealth to people everywhere and really level that playing field. I, I, I love that. So, like, how many things are you in now, Kathy? You're in KIWW, Kathy Ireland Worldwide, billions of dollars of retail sales. What are the different brands or verticals that you're playing in now? So, um, Grant, we're working in verticals from fashion to home to uh, telemedicine, insurance to recovery centers to finance, real estate, entertainment. The, The consistency and the cohesion is our vision. And our vision is teach, inspire, empower, make our world better. It's got to do that. Uh, An example with our um, Ireland Pay, which is our credit card processing, 51% goes to nonprofit. Anybody who seeks to work with us, uh, we, uh, we have 10 areas of nonprofit. And this ranges the gamut from supporting our military veterans to fighting human trafficking, fighting disease and poverty. You can choose one of these and we don't dictate a monetary amount. It can be volunteer time with your team, but that you're going to agree to support one of these initiatives powerfully so that in success, we know that we're going to do well. Are you a privately held company or are you a public company now? We're a privately held company. I get accused of being a control freak. I prefer to think of it as passionate. But you know what, Grant? It really matters how, how we conduct our business and how this is impacting people. I, I never say never, I've been approached about going public many times, yet I love the control. That when we began with a single pair of socks back in 93, Wow. We began by conducting surprise factory inspections because you find out a lot when you show up unexpectedly. So when you say you're a control freak, okay, because I very much, number one, relate to that title, and I actually, I admire that about myself, 
Okay, like to me, that's not some negated, terrible term. I want control. I want more control, not less. Like when, when people say that about you, like what, how do you respond to that? I take it as a compliment. I yeah. honestly, I really do. Um, I, I care. It matters. It's not just the what, but it's mm. the how. And, and from that first pair of socks, okay, how are you able to retail these socks? They're great quality. It's such a great price to value ratio. How? Mm -hmm. What's going on behind the scenes? And I, I, I care about the design integrity. I care about how people are treated at every level, uh, from the factories to the people driving the trucks to the customer who is my boss. I, I, I care about it. And it's got to be right. I take that responsibility very seriously. And so, like you, I consider it a compliment. And, yeah. and I've had been privileged to work with some amazing people. Um, Rose Blumpkin, who um, Mrs. B, who started Nebraska Furniture Mart, never got to meet her. But what an inspiration. So cheap and tell the truth. And uh, her grandson, Irv Blumpkin, was our first client at Nebraska Furniture Mart in furniture. He was so tough. And I loved that. You know, he, he saw me at market with, uh, with our team. And he thought I had an entourage. The entourage, I don't even have an assistant. <laughs> These are specific people. I invested my money in people. And I believe in people people before products. Um, Marcus Limonis is someone I have the privilege of working with at Camping World. And, and that's something that he also shares. I uh, Yet through Irv Plumpkin, had the privilege of meeting Warren Buffett, who has become a friend and a mentor. There's so many great lessons. Well, if you if you if you're hanging out with Warren, he's got to be sniffing around for the company. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a great friend. Something that that we share in common is we both had paper routes as a kid. Okay. So at his uh, at his Nebraska uh, at his Berkshire shareholders meetings. Uh, something that he typically does is the newspaper tossing competition he takes that so seriously and i love that because you know he's a little bit older than me so he's got a little he's got an edge he's got some experience and so yeah i take that into consideration but he takes it so seriously he practices deb his assistant will call me the night before he's practicing it's like i am too and That's crazy. the deal is we're not allowed to use rubber bands because in his day they didn't use rubber bands. It's really hard to throw a newspaper without it going flying without a rubber band. But I love that that dedication. You can call it control, but I love the dedication commitment to doing something well. Yeah. You said you mentioned, I want to go back to a couple of things. You, your first thing you ever sold was socks. Is that is that true? Like why socks? Uh, yes. Yeah. The, the first thing was rocks, but then it was socks. <laughs> Okay, why rocks and then socks? Well, rocks when I was four, because that's what I could get for free, and I could paint and sell them for my wagon and sell them as um, paperweights and objet <laughs> and and, uh, and socks. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was offered an opportunity to model the socks. Um, not, not quite as glamorous as it sounds. John yeah. and Marilyn Moretz from North Carolina. They continue to be incredible partners in business. When you find somebody great to hang on to them. Yeah. Uh, I love the socks and it was so basic and people said it was a really stupid idea, uh, counterintuitive, yet, um, yet what, what I love about socks is it's basic. And I had invested in people, saved my money from modeling and putting a team together. I love sports and I love the idea of working with people with different gifts all coming together with a common goal and uh and i love just you know what what that means and how that works and so uh, we thought what can we bring as far as fashion design innovation and that's how we started with that single pair of socks and today it, it covers all these different sectors but it's all about solutions and then you know what recently i was telling you a little bit about our business with Zoom Casa, powered by Kathy Ireland, why I'm so passionate about this. So our team, we invest in real estate, and I love what you teach about that and, and powerful ways. Real estate has been something that that moves us in scaling real estate, but how does it work for 
and just people at home who might not have a lot of resources. So through our realtor, this uh, amazing uh, Sandy Upchurch, uh, she, great realtor, Sandra introduced us to Fred Bin, and Fred Bin started Zoom Casa. So we're like, okay, how does this work? Kathy, is it Zoom Casa? How do you Zoom say it? Zoom Casa. So you can go to zoomcasa.com. Okay. And or 800-833-Zoom Casa. And I recommend this for anybody who is selling their home and to realtors because you get the double sale. This is not like anything that we've experienced. It's a win-win. So so explain the, it to the me. The seller Let gets the gets cash up front. They can per make their purchase without the contingency. Uh -huh. The realtor gets the benefit. Then what we do is we renovate the home, we resell it, and then when we resell it, the the, the original seller gets ninety percent of that. So and so so it's let me a win win. They end up getting much more than they would have. Yeah. Walk, so walk me through it. I, I I come to you and I say, Kathy, I want you to sell my home for me. No, I want an yep. advance. You're giving me an advance to sell the home. So no, so what we do is we come along within 10 to 15 days, we purchase your home. Okay. So we were, it's transparent, it's third party. Uh, we get a third party valuation of your home. That gives you cash. So you can, you have a great chance at getting the home that you want because it's not contingent upon a sale. Okay. And so from, from that point on, then we go in, so you get at, out of your home, we do the renovation. Got we it. We do the contractors. We pour into it, we resell it. Realtor gets another uh, another uh, paycheck there and we resell it. And it's at a much higher valuation and you get, as the seller, you get that second check, 90% of what it sells for. And in the future, uh, we uh, of the that upside, to be even more. You, I get ninety percent of the upside from what it sold for. Yes. So, so you gave me. Let's say you gave me for round numbers a hundred grand. Then you spent okay. forty thousand on it. Then you sold it for yep. three forty. I'm going to get ninety percent of the two hundred grand, the upside. So, so yes. So you're going to get. You get the money up front. That's crazy. Plus, you get ninety percent of the upside. Yeah, we should do some business together. We should do some business, and, and this works whether your home is three hundred thousand or three million. There's no limit, and it could be uh -huh. for for single homes. Grant, I know you're all about multi properties, so it can it really works across the board. But it's a wonderful solution. We thought about it for the person who's trying to sell their home, and they're yeah. not able to get what we know they can get for it. Yet we say, oh my goodness, this is such a solution for realtors. Yeah. This is, this is good. This is uh, this, I'd never heard of that. So uh, we should do something else on that because I, I know a lot of people that could greatly benefit from it. And, and I have a massive audience of real estate brokers. You are so well versed in, in business and, and so broad. Okay. Uh, going from socks to real estate, to furniture, to fashion, to like, how do you keep all that stacked together, you know, and your personal life? I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, the, the many different sectors, the cohesion is, it's all about our customer. It's about solutions. We began with a mission with those stocks, finding solutions for families, especially busy moms. I was a pregnant aging model when we started with the socks and my life got so hard. Like taking a shower was like a huge deal. Getting out, getting out the driveway was even more heroic. So recognizing, okay, we've got to make her day better. Today, it's expanded its solution. Our brand is for, it's really for everyone. And we serve everybody from opening price point demand to luxury, but whatever it is, it's giving them that great price to value ratio. And to answer your question, how? It's my priorities. And for me, my priorities are my faith, my family, and then being of service through work. And when I don't honor those priorities, I'm a mess and I'm a disaster. I'm apologizing to somebody by 7 a.m. because something has come out of my mouth that didn't come out the way I intended it to. So I've got to honor my priorities. So it's something that um, my favorite book teaches me is to consider others more important than yourself. And some would say that's counterintuitive to business. 
it works for us. And that's what gives us a passion about it. It's if somebody is going to partner with us, I want to know how is partnering with us how is it going to help you? How is it going to raise your bottom line? Of course, we have our philanthropy. That's a huge part of what we do, but we are a for-profit business. We have to be profitable. Of course, that's important, yet it's not the most important. What's more important is how is working with us going to help someone else? How, mm. I mean, we, we really enjoy being of service. We really enjoy bringing people quality, value, just working with great people, and and that's what we love. You you brought up your favorite book. What is your? I have a I have an idea what it is, but what is it? The Bible. Yeah, and when, and when did you get turned on to the Bible? I I was eighteen years old. Grew up really with with no faith. I believed in God, but it, but didn't know Him. Didn't didn't know that I didn't know Him. Yeah. My mom um, came to know the Lord in nursing school. Was real quiet about her faith. And, but I noticed this change in her that I liked. I was a rebellious teenager and mom just suddenly got like this quiet strength. It was very attractive. Mm. I went off to Paris to start modeling. It, it, it sounds glamorous. It was not a, a joyous time in my life. It wasn't what I wanted to be doing yet. I just felt like, Hey, this is an opportunity. I can save some money to maybe start a business, maybe go to college, whatever that is was staying in a home where I didn't feel comfortable, an agent's home. Mm. My room was at the end of this long, dark hall. Uh, later, girls would tell me, oh, you were staying in the dungeon. It's <laughs> like, yeah, that's what it was like. This was uh, 1981. So there's no distractions, no cell phones, none of that. Uh, barely finished high school, so I'd never read another book. And uh, without telling me, mom stuck a Bible in my suitcase. I never read one. Middle of the night, jet lag, lonely, bored. I open it. I open it to, to Matthew. And as I read, I just, I knew that what I was holding in my hands with it was the truth. And there was nobody in that room with me telling me to be this faith or that faith or this denomination or that. It was just like, I want to follow him, especially as, as a young woman on my own in a world that was pretty sketchy. I, I just loved how Jesus honored women in such a powerful way. I loved how disruptive he was mm. in in the very best, best way. And, you know, I regret I made so many mistakes. One of my uh, favorite verses, is the one that speaks about the one who is forgiven much, loves much. I love a whole bunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, another a verse I love, it's Joel 2.25, I will restore the years the locust have eaten. Because I do feel like, oh, man, there's years that I wasted before I, I read it all. Um, but he's so good, and I'm so grateful. Well, thank you for that. And and I think faith is so, so important, like particularly in business, you know, because you don't know where it's going to go. It's so competitive. Let me ask you now, now, do you find business as competitive as the fashion and modeling business? Or yes, uh, yes, different. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of similarities. A uh -huh. lot. I mean, fashion changes so quickly. It's, um, you know, the, the season, it can be very competitive. There can be a lot of trauma in that industry. I mean, that's something that, that you experience. Um, I noticed when I started in the home industry, it's like, oh, I like this. I like how this feels. You, you mean different, just, different than fashion? Different than fashion. Be um, yet I've, I've recently re-entered the fashion industry. And, and as I shared, we're heading to Las Vegas tomorrow for licensing expo. And in maturity, I've recognized, um, my goodness, it, it's all about people uh -huh. and finding the right people. So when I was a young, vulnerable teenager, I didn't always come across the, the best people. Yet, as I get older, I'm very uh, careful, cautious, discerning about who we get into business with. And we work with, oh my goodness, just the most wonderful, great people who have integrity, ethics, um, you know, from our partners at, at PPI, at Bagatelle International, at Teddy, Amorex, just wonderful, wonderful people 
great leaders. And that's, that's what I'm really drawn to because I, I trust that they're going to do it well, no matter what challenges, it's going to be hard. We're going to have hard times um, for sure, but it's how people navigate through those tough times. That's what matters. You, you, Kathy, what, so what is the revenue of KIWW? That is a great question, Grant. And because we're a private company, we don't speak numbers. Okay. I mean, there's, okay. I, people have commented I mean, and- I saw, I saw 24 million online and I'm like, no, it's gonna, it's more than that. I guarantee it's more than that. You're in the credit card processing, home sales, furniture sales, fashion. Like I'm a private health company. But I, you know, it doesn't matter to me, like, because it's a, it's a. I know the IRS knows, so I know it's got to. be. Can you just tell me it's more than twenty four million dollars a year? Yes, it yes. It, it most certainly is. Yes. Um, Forbes was after us for a very long time. Uh -huh. They they scrutinize, and I tend, you know, I'm I'm a private person with yeah. a, owning a private company, and I, I mean, by nature, I'm shy and. I recognize, you know, as I get older, I recognize that that shy, selfish shell, it really doesn't help people. And so, um, you know, Forbes at one point, they said, well, you know, we've been following you. We've been crunching your numbers, blah, blah, blah. And so I was just like, no, no comment. Um, we're we're doing a story with or without your participation. And my old job description as a model was shut up and pose. And so I reject that today. Yeah. And if somebody's going to talk about me, I'd like to participate in the conversation. And they're one of the Forbes family. I mean, they're just wonderful people. And uh, and they have done some stories on our company. And, uh, you know, there's there's been other financial publications who report on us. But I just... I well, just now, now, now I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have to go search that now and find out what they say rather than what you say. And, and I, I just want to say to you, like, it, to me, I grew up, I'm about, I'm a little older than you are, okay? And I grew up in a time where you don't talk about money, you don't talk about politics, you do not talk about religion, probably similar to the way you were brought up, you know, keep it quiet, stay on the down low. And today I know, like, I'm like, man, it inspires people. It, it, it inspires people to hear what you've done and to see what you've built. And, and I know how it could be, you know, that Intra, you know, why tell anybody? Maybe they're going to like me less because you're big. But I would expect you have produced billions and billions and billions of dollars of revenue with your businesses. And I just want to tell you that that is a just tremendous inspiration to me that you've been able to do that, if that's true, and that you stay humble and connected, interested in people, and private. The fact that you're a privately held business, I think, is very cool. Thank you. I'm... I have so much respect for you and I, I coming from you, that means a lot. So thank you so much, Grant. It's, um, I'm really grateful and I work with an amazing team. Uh, most of us have been together over 30 years. You know, we've got some younger executives that weren't born when we started. It's uh, it's a great team effort. And as you know, when, when you really seek to do great things and it's hard. And yeah. we've, we've pulled those 24 sevens. We've, um, we've bumped into some, you know, real obstacles along the way, but you really find out what people are made of when you go through hard times. Cause everyone can be lovely when things are going well, but when they're not, you, you go through those fires and they, you're, you're holding onto the hands of people with you. You come out stronger and refined and it's, uh, you know, you asked, at the beginning of our conversation, was it difficult for people to take you seriously? I, I, yeah, um, but I didn't expect anything else. Um, I, I like being underestimated. It's a mm. good place to be. And I, to, I, I don't mind proving myself because I, I think that's how you, you grow trust. And I think some people would say, well, you were known as this model person. So, of course, you had these opportunities. I would say some doors were open because of that long ago career, but they weren't the right doors. They were right. doors of curiosity right. that wasted each other's time. They didn't take my ideas as CEO right. seriously. And, uh, and and just grateful to, to be able to work with people, with great people. Yeah. What, what, what is the baseball in the over your right shoulder? What is the baseball for? Oh, this, 
it, it was just my, uh, this is from my dad. So I just, I, I loved baseball as a kid. I was, I was that kid that was always picked last. And um, I worked really hard because I didn't like that. So it's like, okay, I got to change this. Yeah. <laughs> I just practiced and practiced and practiced. And, um, you know, never became a great baseball player. But I got picked um, third, second, sometimes first. Uh-huh. It was just a lot of, it was a lot of hard work. And one time uh, I was 10 years old and my dad told me we were going to go buy a vacuum cleaner. And he wanted me to come with him told me to grab my baseball hat. I was like, okay. And then we pull up um, at at the baseball stadium. And it it was just a a really special time. That's awesome. And and it reminds me of the baseball cover, you know, uh, that you did. So how old were you when that cover was done? Do you remember? Um, Is is that SI? I don't know where it was. I just remember that the, you're, 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 you have a bat on, a swimsuit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, um, we were in Dominican Republic. It was kind of impromptu. <laughs> there were, you know, there are these kids playing. It, it was fun. I'll tell you the greatest compliment, though, I got. It was um, from a teacher. She said her husband was a baseball coach, and he said that my position was correct. So I was really happy about That's that. crazy. Okay. So, and your, your, who was most influential in your life, your mom or your dad? Both, for different reasons. Uh-huh. Um, mom, just gentle, hardworking, ultimate entrepreneur. She was also an Avon lady. She'd go door to door. And there was nothing that mom couldn't do. So babysitting, house cleaning, and raising three daughters, uh, just with grace and strength. Um, and dad... Just working with um, labor relations, how people are treated, always um, wanting to to help people. So both of them, just really hardworking, good people with good hearts, greatly inspired me. And I, as a kid, you think everybody's parents are like that. And it's like, oh my goodness. Um, and so many people just kind of adopted our parents. Kathy, so when you, when you think about business, if you were to pick one as being more important than the other, would it be sales or marketing? Ooh, um, I love sales because sales is the lifeblood of every business. Yeah. Nothing happens without the sale. And marketing is very important, yet the, the products, the services have to sell itself. Yes, you have to communicate it. So mm-hmm. they are, marketing is extremely important. important. Uh, yet when I have the opportunity to meet with the sales team, I get so excited. I've had business partners say, hey, will you come and we've got this retail opportunity. Will you come cut a ribbon? I want to go cut a ribbon. Um, how does that help our customer by me, you know, having hair and makeup done, going to a store? She's made a heroic effort to get to the store to shop. She wants her products and yeah. I'm there cutting a ribbon. How does that help her? And I find that people, they don't want an autographed photo from me. They want their solutions. If somebody recognizes me, it's, hey, I bought this lamp. What rug do you recommend goes with it? That's the relation. And I love that relationship. And so what I tell people is, you know, um, I don't think I'm going to cut the ribbon, but I'll, I want, I'd like to meet with your sales team. Mm. Because if I can communicate with the sales team, why did we go with this finish? on this dining set where is the design inspiration from why where's the innovation why would this help a customer why is it going to make their day better there's a reason for everything we do and when i can communicate that to the sales team and they communicate it to the end use customer we tend to have great success yeah and then and then what do you think the salespeople would say that you're talking to would they say sales or marketing's most important you know I, they're actually, they're both really important. Right. You can look at it is what's more important, breathing in or breathing out, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> we need to, we need yeah. to have it well marketed. We need to communicate what we're doing and why they need it. What are those innovations? And then we need it to move out the door. And, and how do you think, or how have you experienced the social media with Facebook and Instagram, the stories, the reels, YouTube, like all that uh, the, the new abilities for people to market 
uh, online. How has that changed the way you guys, whether it's the home business, the credit card business, or the furniture business, or any of the other businesses, how has that changed the way your companies looked at sales and marketing? It's instantaneous. So when mm -hmm. we started back in the 90s, in the early 90s, uh, we, we didn't have that. And we, it, but we knew that we needed that communication, that information from our customers. So we went grassroots with that. But yet today, it's instant. I mean, just today, I was uh, connecting with a realtor online who was just, I mean, she was wanting to know about the Zoom Casa. And she was like, oh, my goodness. So this doesn't replace realtors. It's like, no, no, no. It's an asset to you. She's like, okay, I get it. Uh, talking to our end use clients, it's like, what finish do you think would be good? on this desk, on this office desk, what do you like? And getting their feedback so we can be a better service. So that part I really love and we've really come to depend upon that direct communication instantaneously globally. And I love that. You know, and you're, you're but, but I'm like, you're active on Instagram. I'm seeing you personally active there. So when you're telling a, a male or female, to me, to me, the fact that you're a woman in business is no different than a man being in business. So I don't really want to make it about, oh my God, it's amazing what you've done as a woman in business. I think that that is so like reductive of the person uh, that, that's uh -huh. built Thanks, the business. Man. Yeah, um, because I would hope that as a woman, I would be as, I think, if I was, I don't know what my name would be as a woman, but Grant, I don't know. <laughs> but but um, I would apply the same things. I'm sure I'd have different challenges, but but I, I think I would still be successful. Um, what, what are you telling people today about how to think about how to get a brand or a message out? Uh, because the fact that you were on a cover of a magazine or in a magazine in the 90s doesn't doesn't mean anybody's thinking about that today when they're going to buy one of your products or services or looking at your competition. So how would you tell me to go about that today? TV, radio, print, social media, what would you say to, 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 to lean on? I think um, it's really important to know who your customer is, who are you trying to reach and why and what message and to reach them the way that they want to be reached. So, uh, I, I mean, you reach the multitudes and you, you do it so well, uh, so precisely and specifically and focused. And I think it's just really knowing um, what age group am I trying to reach and how do they like to communicate? So I think it's, it's cool. for most people, it's gonna be multiple platforms mm -hmm. and then being nimble, being able to pivot quickly as, as things change to always reach them in the most efficient ways. How, how important is, I'm going to go back to this sales and marketing thing. So, so I, I want you to help me with like, what's the most important thing for, for the people watching this? When you think about sales, marketing, and then if I add organization, which one of those three are you like, and I know it could be like none of them work without the other one, but if you're going to pick one, where does the organization sit with sales and marketing? It's all, it's, it's all cohesive. It works together. You need the organization for the marketing, for the sales. It's got to work together. So you've got to have that communication and they, they complement when it, when it's working well, they complement each other. They go together. You're getting the message out there in a powerful way, in an authentic way. And the sales just, just flow out of that. It, when it's done well, when it's done right, the sales follow and the sales flow. And then, Kathy, if somebody was starting today, or maybe they have a small business, there's 32 mi million small businesses in America. How important would you tell somebody that to start thinking about scaling that business and making it bigger? Like, do they stay small, or or have you tried staying small, or would you say scale and and 10x your business? I would stay say scale mm -hmm. um, when we stay small, mm -hmm. that can seem safe, uh, yet it's stagnating mm. and stagnation equals death. And so we've always got to grow. I mean, look at life. It, life is always growing mm. and it's just a natural part of, of growing and succeeding is scaling and scaling well. I like to think big. I like to think with no limits. I like to think because I believe in what we're doing. I believe we're offering people great quality, great, 
great products and services that I believe are going to help them. I love the jobs that are created because of our work. It's, uh, this is what will get the American economy back on track. It's just that these jobs that, that people who are listening to you and they're starting these businesses and they're scaling and they're growing, it's, it's wonderful. And I, there was a time when I would be overwhelmed and just kind of want to retreat, overwhelmed by needs that I was exposed to. But yet, and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm one person, what can we do? It's so, you know, there's so many great needs out there. Yet, when we are exposed to needs that are bigger than us and opportunities that are bigger than us, that's exciting. And as long as there are things to be accomplished, we want to keep growing. Are you concerned, you brought up America, okay? Are you concerned about America right now? Yes. Tell, tell me more. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, like, like so, so many people, I mean, I love, I love our country and I love the freedom of mm -hmm. our country. And my hope is that we continue to be strong and get on track. I see so much division right now. In fact, one of the projects that we are working on is uh, I'm executive producing a documentary. It's called Anxious Nation. And when education is a huge part of my life and passion, I serve on boards of education for 25 years. Uh, and currently, my husband and I are two of the co-founders of uh, a startup school in our community, a college prep pre-K through high school, mentoring programs for over three decades. And I have never experienced a more difficult time to be a young person or mm. an old person, a person of any age. And uh, this film, Anxious Nation, it addresses our youth specifically and the anxiety that they are suffering through. And what we've come to recognize is so many people suffer alone. And uh, this is a, a, a film by Laura Morton. She's a 21 time New York Times bestselling author. Vanessa Roth is an Academy Award winning director. And, uh, and this is out now. Uh, you can go to anxiousnation.com to learn where you can watch it. But it, it really helps families recognize that they're not alone in this. And this doesn't have to be your identity. Yeah, is, is, this, is this due to uh, the anxiety, na or anxious nation, the anxiety epidemic? Is this due, do you think, to social media, labeling, all the ADH, uh, ADD, ADHD, all the, the supposed diseases that have exploded, um, w whether they're contrived or legitimate, I'm not sure, but... What's causing this anxiety? The shutdown from the epidemic? You know, Grant, so many things. that The film doesn't uh, target one particular issue. It addresses many uh -huh. uh, and recognizes that there are many factors that go into this. It chronicles uh, several different young people and their families, all with different situations. But when we look at the last few years and everything that you mentioned uh, from social media to the lockdown, Mm -hmm. to um, children trying to read masked faces. Yes. It's been really hard, really, really hard on young people. And it's heartbreaking. And I'm so proud of these kids who are coming through this and they're coming through it strong. And, uh, but it's, it's difficult. How long have you been married? Uh, it'll be 35 years in August. Man, good for you. Wow. I think my wife and I... I got a great guy. He's the keeper. Well, he must be. Well, you got to keep him at this point, you know. Like, <laughs> I've been married 20 years, and I just think my wife and I both think the family unit's so important to, to community, and as tough as marriage is at times, it's like, man, you know, having a teammate, somebody you can depend on, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, it's, it's great work, and anything worthwhile, it's going to be work, but... You work through the tough stuff, and you really get your priorities in order. Kathy, you've been phenomenal. Uh, I'd love to have Laura at some point. I didn't. I didn't know Laura was your uh, your producer on Anxious Nation. Where, uh, where, Laura, Laura wrote it. Um, and what you you yeah. were the executive producer. 
Yes. Which means what? What is an executive producer? I never, I never understand these terms. My wife's an actress, and I'm like, what's the difference between an executive producer and a producer? You know, there, the, there's so many different ways of that producing can be explained. In my instance, uh, when I uh, learned what I've known Laura for years and years, and when I learned that she was working on this with Vanessa, I was a little skeptical because I didn't know how it was going to be presented. When I experienced the roughs, I was like, wow, I am getting, I get phone calls every week from kids, from their parents. It's, um, you know, my kid is suffering from anxiety, mm. a suicide attempt, drugs, I just all this hard stuff. And when I saw this, it's like, how can I help? What can I do to help? So, and you talk about marketing and sales. That's what executive producers do. It's Got both it. with organizations. Okay. It's getting it out there. Okay. And you said earlier, as we close here, uh, you said that acting in France, Paris, was not as uh, glamorous. What What's more glamorous, be, being a model or being a business owner? Oh, my goodness. Um, so in uh, modeling, it, it, it wasn't, and you had mentioned acting. I, I tell people I have great respect for your wife. I tell people um, I'm not an actress. I've got the movies to prove it. It wasn't a strength. <laughs> it paid the bills for a while. But um, I always knew I belonged on the other side of the camera. It mm. just took me a while to get there, trying and failing at businesses while I was modeling, grateful for that income. But I knew I belonged on the other side of the lens. And, um, and that's what I love. That's my sweet spot. That's where I, I love to be of service in that way. And, and you guys have kids? I, I don't know that. We do. We have three. We are blessed with three incredible kids, Eric, Lily, and Chloe. And you know what? I'm going to claim Eric's wife, Bethany. we got to share her with her parents, but she's amazing. And then we've got two little granddaughters who are just stolen my heart, and uh, they're the best. Yeah, well, we'll have to get the kids together sometime. Kathy, you've been phenomenal. Thank you so much, mostly for being so successful, uh, not in just one genre either, but over many, many things. Grant, I so appreciate you. Thank you. I, we, we've been at it for a while yet. I, I do feel like we're a baby brand just getting started. I think, so you, I, think, I think you will go public one day, though. I have a feeling. <laughs> I'm just making the prediction here right now. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Give me, a, give me a heads up. Guys, you have been listening to Kathy Ireland, American model, uh, actress, entrepreneur, philanthropist, has built a multi- billion dollar enterprise with Kathy Ireland um, worldwide and also check out the movie the documentary Anxious Pandemic they can find that what at anxiouspandemic.com anxiousnation.com anxious yes. nation sorry about that anxiousnation.com Kathy again thank you so much for being so generous with your time today oh thank you Grant for inviting me thanks a lot 